We're about to tackle one of the most persistent and debated questions in mathematics. What is the value of zero raised to the power of zero? This expression appears simple, but it's a mathematical paradox. It sits at the intersection of two fundamental and conflicting rules. Welcome back to Mental Math. Let's dive in. First, let's explore the powerful heuristic argument that zero to the power of zero should be one. We begin with the fundamental rule of exponents for division. Now, let's see what happens if we choose the exponents a and b to be the same value, say, n. Substituting n for a and b gives us x to the power of n minus n. This simplifies to x to the power of zero. At the same time, any non-zero number divided by itself is simply one. Since the left-hand side is the same in both expressions, the right-hand sides must be equal. Therefore, for any non-zero x, x to the power of zero equals one. This rule explicitly excludes zero. However, if we were to naively extend this pattern and ask what value preserves continuity at zero, we get a suggestion. This suggests that a convenient definition would be that zero to the power of zero is one. But this is not a proof. However, an equally fundamental rule points to a completely different answer. Zero raised to any positive power means multiplying zero by itself, which always results in zero. For example, zero cubed is zero, zero squared is zero, and zero to the power of one is zero. If we follow this unwavering pattern as the exponent gets closer and closer to zero, then it appears that zero to the power of zero ought to be zero. We have a logical stalemate. To resolve this, we must turn to the rigorous framework of calculus and limits. Let's reframe the problem by considering the surface defined by the function z equals x to the power of y. The question now becomes, what is the limit of this function as the point x? y approaches the origin 0, 0. A critical rule in multivariable calculus states that for a limit to exist, the function must approach the same value along every possible path to that point. If we find two paths with different limits, the limit does not exist. Let's test our first path. We will approach the origin along the positive x-axis, where the y-coordinate is always zero. We evaluate the limit of x to the power of zero as x approaches from the positive side. Since x to the power of zero is one for any positive x, this simplifies. The limit of a constant is the constant itself. So along this path, the limit is one. Now for our second path. We will approach along the positive y-axis, where the x-coordinate is always zero. Here, we evaluate the limit of 0 to the power of y as we approaches from the positive side. 0 to any positive power y is 0. The limit is therefore 0. To be thorough, let's test a third path, approaching the origin along the line where y equals x. This requires us to find the limit of x to the power of x as x approaches 0. This is a classic indeterminate form of the type zero to the power of zero. To solve this, we use a standard technique, rewriting the expression using the natural logarithm and exponential function. We can express x to the power of x as e raised to the power of the natural log of x to the power of x. Using the power rule for logarithms, we bring the exponent x down. Because the exponential function is continuous, we can move the limit inside the exponent. Our problem now is to find the limit of x times the natural log of x. As x approaches zero, this is a zero times negative infinity form. We must rearrange it to apply L'Hopital's rule. We rewrite it as the natural log of x divided by one over x. This is now an indeterminate form 
where both numerator and denominator approach infinity in magnitude. L'Hopital's rule states that for these indeterminate forms, the limit of the ratio of two functions is equal to the limit of the ratio of their derivatives. First, let's find the required derivatives. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Now, we substitute these derivatives back into our limit. To simplify this fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. This simplifies to the limit of negative x. As x approaches 0, this limit is 0, giving us e to the power of 0. Finally, e to the power of 0 is 1, so along the path y equals x, the limit is 1. So, let's summarize our findings from the path analysis. We've found that two paths give us 1, while one path gives us 0, demonstrating the limit depends on the path of approach. Because the limit is path-dependent, the conclusion from calculus is definitive. The limit does not exist. In the context of calculus, zero to the power of zero is an indeterminate form, joining others like zero divided by zero and infinity over infinity. However, the story doesn't end here. The correct answer depends entirely on the branch of mathematics you're in. Historically, mathematicians like Euler often used zero to the power of zero equals one. But modern analysis demands this greater level of care. In calculus and analysis, where the concept of limits is paramount, zero to the power of zero must remain undefined to avoid contradictions. But in combinatorics, a to the power of b counts the number of functions from a set with b elements to one with a elements. So, Zero to the power of zero counts the maps from the empty set to the empty set. In set theory, a function is a set of ordered pairs. The empty function is the empty set of ordered pairs, and it's the unique function from the empty set to itself. Thus, there is exactly one such map. Therefore, in combinatorics, zero to the power of zero is defined to be one as this definition is necessary for many counting formulas like the binomial theorem to hold true. So, the value of zero to the power of zero is not a simple number, but a reflection of how context defines which definition we use. The mathematics remains rigorous. We simply choose the definition most useful for the problem at hand which is why most computer programming languages define zero to the power of zero as one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed exploring this mathematical paradox, please like and subscribe for more deep dives into the beautiful world of mathematics.